How's it going everyone? Countless Taker here and welcome back to another episode of Collector's Own Hall. Got a good pile of comics today and a few little goodies to show you all. So yeah, let's get to it. Okay, I messed up. I thought I had 7 and 8. Turns out I didn't, but I got issue 9 of Star Wars Bounty Hunters. That's a really cool cover and yeah, like I said, I can't believe I missed 7 and 8. They've got that at the comic shop and I just, I looked at them and I thought, no, nah, I think I got them. I keep forgetting to bring my list of like what I'm getting next, I just, a comic shop day and it's like, oh, I forgot again, uh, I'll just wing it and uh, yeah, unfortunately now I'm missing two. Funny enough, last video, that's how I lost track of uh, Harley Quinn White Knight, I just completely missed issue two and three and they sold out of issue two so I thought that's why I'll wait for the, you know, the big thick trade paperback to come out. Alrighty, I went a bit crazy with the DC Future State ones. I got issue two of the Dark Detective. Really good, I'm actually really enjoying this one. Like I said, it's just so strange seeing Bruce Wayne, like young Bruce Wayne in the future instead of, you know, um, Terry as in, you know, Batman. But uh, yeah, I really am enjoying this one. Continue with the Future State, I got issue one of Wonder Woman. That's a really cool cover, I like that one. And uh, yeah, this, I'm um, quite, see there's a few that I was like, Neh. but uh, so far Dark Detective Harley Quinn, and uh, now Wonder Woman, really good. It's, it's almost quite sad. It's like everyone's got their own sort of Future State arcs going. Uh, everyone that's close to her is like perished and she's trying, I think it's Darkseid if I remember. He's better to sort of destroy everyone and she's trying to stop him and Swamp Thing sacrificed himself to help her out and it's like, oh, I forgot to say this with the future states It's like half and half and so it's the main story is Dark Detective But that one has Red Hood and that's actually a really good one. They're hunting masked uh, Not vigilantes, but if you're wearing a mask, you're gonna get hunted and yeah He's not his partner, but someone who's like sort of associated with him ends up killing a kid and he was being controlled with the mask, so it's like, ooh, getting interesting. Alrighty, I got issue one, like, uh, once again, like, Future State, uh, Suicide Squad. Unfortunately, um, I struggled with it. I was, when I think Suicide Squad, I think, you know, Harley Quinn, you know, Boomerang, um, Deathstroke, but I learned later it's the Justice Squad, so it's going to be Justice Squad versus Suicide Squad, but I don't know if it's going to be the Suicide Squad that I know, but... Yeah, unfortunately this one fell with a lot of talking, a lot of dialogue, like a bit of action, but then most of it is just them sitting around talking, it's like, mm, kill something. <laughs> Alright, I got another blind one today, uh, issue one of Hell Witch. It started off really good and then it kind of just, uh, sort of, um, how do I explain, unnecessary things, it's like, mm, okay, I mean, I'll get into depth. This is a comic that's very not shy. I mean, this character right here was full 69ing another woman. <laughs> so, like, nothing against that. What I'm saying is, I mean, it's full view of them doing it. And I'm thinking, well, there's something happening with them, and now you've got time to do that. <laughs> that kind of thing. It was like they put it in there just for the sake of putting it in there, if you know what I mean. And I wouldn't mind, the person she did with, she didn't even give a fuck about him in the end, she just let him perish. So I was like, oh, okay then. Alright, final issue, and this was such a fun read while it lasted. Issue 7 of Deceased, Dead Planet, and spoiler alert, they found the cure. It was a really good ending, and I was really satisfied with how it ended. And yeah, this kind of thing is what I love, you know, short and sweet, which is ironic of me of saying, because Red Sonja is currently on a issue 24, but I really love that run and it's like before it was like Harley Quinn was like 65 issues if you know what I mean but yeah it was really good in the end and I really liked the moment where it's like they go up to Penguin and it's like oh no I'm still gonna kill you all but then uh, John Constantine's like oh no you won't and takes them all out and yeah they finally got the cure and everyone sort of lived happily over after I think that's it for the dead planet it's over now there was no light to be continued or there was no sort of climatic uh, and oh, how do I put it? Cliffhanger. It just had everyone sort of rebuilding their lives, and yeah, I was I was very very satisfied. Now here's a random one I picked up, and I really enjoyed issue one. I think it's a one-off of Ginny Hex, and I thought to myself, 
is this related to Jonah Hex in a way? And it was, but not so much focusing on him, but focusing on, I believe, the granddaughter of the daughter? I can't remember. But yeah, I was really hooked on this one, just to give it a short thing. So, I think it was her grandfather who was Jonah Hex, but then a, oh, I can't remember. Apparently some guy rocks up and he's like, oh, I'm your dad. I'm, you know, I was with your mum and I left her. I didn't know she was pregnant, but it turns out he was looking for the box and was looking for this eye and then he become three-eyed Jack and they went back in time to the, like the Western and it was just, it was really fun. I might keep an eye on for um, uh, Ginny Hex. Really, really enjoyed it. See, I haven't really got into much Jonah Hex, but I actually really do like the character. I'm pretty sure there was an episode of the uh, Batman Adventures, like the animated adventures. It was like him and then, I, I forget what it was. It was like when they were building the railroad and he was involved somehow. And yeah, I do actually really like the character. I need to read more about him. I know there was the movie and it was sort of a <laughs> talk about it, Sonia. Issue 23 and thank Christ. The little fucker is dead. The bloody kid has been giving everyone so much grief and they made him squirm. Hang on, I'm gonna get the, get a good shot. He's been a right pain in the ass. So yeah, here, so he's basically sent Sonya, you know, torturing her, making sure she's, you know, she's fighting all her men, like his men and it's like, oh yeah, kill you now. Oh yeah, look at that smug little punk. And then literally in the next panel, he starts squealing like a little piggy. No, no. And then, crushed. And then, so his little mate, oh no, he's just a boy. And <laughs> picking his, like all the, because he was controlling the birds and he was having them, you know, kill people. So it's like a poetry emotion that he gets picked, they you know, pecked to death. And yeah, the little fucker is dead. I'm so happy. Because he's like Joffrey from Game of Thrones. He was just an absolute shithead. And uh, yeah, I don't know where we're going from here. I mean, Red Sun is currently recovering, and yeah, I look forward to seeing what else she gets up to. Or there might be, um, I think there's going to be a special issue 25, but whether they're going to continue on, I have no idea. But they got another um, uh, run of comics for her, uh, Sonyaversal, I think it's what's going to be called, and yeah, I look forward to it. Oh, I can't believe this is almost to an end. So there's one more issue after this one, uh, issue four of Dynamite. I I'm really enjoying this one, and I'll tell you who I'm really enjoying, Miss Fury. Never heard of her before, but I remember there was, um, because I'm following Dynamite on, like, every social media, they were advertising, I think it was an Indigo campaign of Miss Fury, you know, re-releasing her comic runs, and, yeah, she's in this, and it, she's really enjoyable, I actually really like her, I might see if I can pick up some, you know, some comics of hers in the future, because, yeah, she's really funny in this one. So what was really good is, so she, her sort of, um, run of comics is she's in the um uh how do i call it um like noir you know like back in the 60s and that kind of thing i think she was you know around like world war Two. no that may have been the, that was the 40s world war Two. yeah and basically that's her sort of history and her and dynamo in present time she's actually you know an old old lady which is you know really good so i might see if i can pick some of those up in the future Alrighty, issue two of Red Sun and the Price of Blood, and this is one gorgeous looking cover. I mean, <laughs> like very, you know, pretty and, you know, address the elephant in the room, very sexy. But I just, it's such a really nice, you know, picture of her, and got all the like, little fairies and everything. It's really good. And, uh, yeah, she's, I like this one scene in this one. It was her sort of uh, uh, partner in crime or a sidekick. It caught me off guard, I was like, whoa! So there's like this thing going on where they release, it's like a drug, and they release it, and they get addicted, like these people get addicted, and then the, uh, the king, not the king, I can't remember, he then starts to arrest them, so it's like a, you know, an ongoing thing. So he takes them down, he's like, oh yeah, you want a bit of this? And you know, so his body's like, oh yeah, I'd like to have a little taste, see how it is. Boom! <laughs> Locked him on fire. That's where you get shooted. And I keep forgetting this. Another part. That she's killed this sort of high, high-end person. And they're basically like, "You killed him." Uh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. And last but certainly not least, I've been really looking forward to you know the next issue, issue two of Vampirella, The Dark Powers. <laughs> she is so funny in this one. Like I mentioned, I think I mentioned. There's been a couple of Vampirella comics where I'm very 
mm, it's getting a bit too sort of personal and in depth. Whereas this one, she's just really funny. Th like, think of Wolverine in X Men. <laughs> she doesn't follow the code. Once again, she breaks the rules of the you know the team, and it's like, well, now we're going to kick you out. You don't follow the rules, and she's like, whatever, fuck you all. But then all of a sudden, they turn around. Oh no, we need you. Please stay. So I'm really having fun with this one. Like her with Red Sonja, Betty Veronica, uh, Cassie Hack. Those are the Vampirella I really love. I feel like there's sort of you know two different versions of Vampirella. There's the kind of one where she's very, it's almost like real life. She's dealing with issues, dealing with problems. And then there's this one, very cartoony and very sort of like retro in a way. Like when Vampirella was doing her tales, like when she first debuted into you know pop culture, you know, she was very jokey, very funny, and that's the kind of, you know, Vampirella I really love, not so much the one that's very serious. And I remember a run of comics, this is when I first started getting into her, when I got Aliens vs Predator, no, Aliens vs Vampirella, and then there was her current run then, it was very, uh, how do I explain, it's almost like she's writing a diary, and we're following it along, if that makes sense, and yeah, that one was all of, sort of hit and miss for me, but yeah, I'm... Um, I still love her, I just, I like her in one run of comics more than the other. Alrighty, no mangas and books today, because I'm still going through the ones I currently got, so I don't want to, you know, make the pile any bigger, uh, but uh, onto the goodies that I picked up. It actually wasn't a big stack, so I thought I'd pick up some, like I said, some goodies. Uh, this one just jumped out, and to stick with my, um, oh, they're over there. Uh, Luke bought me a load of uh, Star Wars little mini figures, and there was one with, like, sort of, like car, like a vehicle, but this one's like Hot Wheels instead. I got um Sabine, uh, her um, I uh, don't even know what the kind of car is called, but it's basically in the shape of a helmet and it looks really cool and I can put it next to, you know, my collection of Sabine, which is ironic because I haven't actually watched Star Wars, but the series with her appearing. I mean, when I got into X-Wing, I bought her, her TIE Fighter, which was really cool, and now I've bought her, you know, her, her race car, which, you know, I'm just... I'm just a big fan. Might try and get it next to Poe's uh, X-Wing somehow. There we are. Perfect. Can you see that? My dear. Alrighty. The new uh, Godzilla and King Kong trailer was released, or the first trailer, f I think it was, you know, for the new movie, and oh, I am excited as fuck. I cannot wait. And literally, like, Within minutes of that trailer drop in the comic shop, got a lot of you know notifications that memorabilia was being released, you know, like figures and all that stuff. And he managed to get a box of um, blind little mini figures, and me and Luke bought a couple. But he was really excited to see what was in there, so me and Luke said, "All right, we'll open them here." And we really all we all wanted to get Mothra. Unfortunately, four of them that me and Luke bought each. We didn't pull Mothra, but I pulled out some really cool ones. I got um, King Ghidorah. I got the... Uh, I don't know the name. Hang on. I got... Godzilla 1995, the flame one. And I just got... Uh, I believe Godzilla 19... 1984. And unfortunately, I got two of him. But, um... Yeah, I will. I'll, what I'll do, because I actually got them on my monitor. They actually look really cool to get them displayed. So I'm going to try and get the whole set and I'll film a bit of footage and put it over right here. And they are really nice looking, you know, little figures. I never, because I'm, I love buying little things and opening them up and everything, but I never liked those you know, short and stubby figures that they went with for a while. You know, like this, and they got the big legs and everything, but then they released ones like, um, you know, the Aliens and Predator. Where is it? Where is it? Can you see them up here? No, you can't, unfortunately. I did them in a Clayton Zone haul before, and they were really nice little figurines, and very unique. And this is what I like about these uh, Godzilla, you know, run of little figures at the moment. They're really, really cool looking, and they're small enough to get on my monitor. And yeah, it, they're just, hopefully I can get Mothra, you know, next time I go up there. And hopefully they still got some more, because yeah, they're very, you know, had a, like, very popular. I mean, me and Luke got there, and there was probably about ten left in the box. I don't know how many are left, but yeah, we, you know, we cleared it out. So someone's definitely going to get a Mothra most likely by the time we get there. But yeah, I'm going to be happy to buy some more when we're up there next time. Alrighty, and that's an end to this episode, Clay's own Hall. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you later.